Tyson's height was seen as his weakness even before his transition to professional boxing. When this huge and terrifying opponent attempted to mock his measurements, Tyson responded like a true gentleman, assuring that it wouldn't be a problem once they stepped into the ring. Welcome, in today's video I'll take you with me to go through the golden chapter of boxing history where Mike Tyson used what many considered a disadvantage to destroy a true giant in the ring. I hope you're comfortable because this new adventure begins right here. While nowadays the ideal heavyweight fighter figure has evolved to be under the standard of Tyson Fury, for example, in Iron Mike's time. The seed had already been planted that a boxer's height should be a remarkable aspect if they were expected to be intimidating in the ring. After being rejected by the Olympic team for his measurements, Tyson decided to turn what many pointed out as his weakness into his strongest weapon to start fighting against opponents taller than him, even before becoming the youngest champion in history. You probably remember how Tyson dominated Sammy Scaff, David Jocko, or the imposing Cuban Jose Ribalta. Yeah, that's a fighter. Those who posed a real threat on his path to glory. And thus we arrive at Frank Bruno. Looking at him gave the feeling of witnessing a giant mountain composed of muscles that created the perfect environment for unleashing violence. His almost two meters in height truly made him an intimidating fighter. Many of his opponents felt defeat just by seeing him enter the ring. But his appearance wasn't the worst part of the experience of being his rival, his punching power was lethal enough to knock out fighters similar to him. Before his encounter with Tyson, Bruno fought for the World Boxing Association belt in 86, where he was destroyed and knocked out by Tim Weiderspoon. Some rats around the head nonetheless, it's not all going his way. Confidence. But he's sitting... This setback in his discipline only motivated him to train harder, a decision that led him to collect a very good streak of beautiful knockouts with the ultimate goal of winning a new opportunity for the title. Destiny, fickle by nature, had crossed Bruno and Tyson's paths in their youth. When the great Iron Mike was just an aspiring boxer, he would become the rival of the man who would later dare to steal the titles that the different associations would confer on him. 4. In the ring of the Hilton Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, Tyson had to defend his world heavyweight title from the ring magazine for the first time, for the fifth time the International Boxing Federation title, for the seventh time the World Boxing Association title, and for the eighth time the World Boxing Council title. February 25th, 89, was not simply just another fight in the disciplined journey of any of these fighters. What was the second chance to achieve glory for Bruno was Tyson's chance to show an old rival the level he had developed. Thus, under the supervision of Richard Steele, both entered the honorable fighting ring to settle the debts of their past. Bruno's left pretended to break the ice, but only triggered Tyson's fearless offensive, which, after a brief exchange of blows, sent him to the canvas seconds after the start of the contest. Bruno down after a right hand. As he got back up and continued the fight, it became evident that Bruno's main target was Tyson's head. Amidst the clinches, Bruno found a way to sneak his right fist and collide it against the only thing standing between him and the world title, his old rival. Fighting on the edge of the limits, he received a clear warning from Steele when he pushed Tyson back against the ropes and delivered a controversial blow to the back of his head. Solid left and a right by Tyson, and now Bruno Rabbit, and again is a smart tactic by... He seemed willing to do anything for the crown and that only left Tyson in a dangerous environment. Tyson worked his victory with body shots. According to his experience, this was the best strategy to weaken his opponent from within. At times, Bruno played dishonestly while holding onto Mike Tyson's head. His fighting style, very close to the edge, gave the feeling that he was circumventing the rules. Every time Steele put some distance between them, Bruno had nothing but his unstable defense to stop the attacks of a Tyson who fought very well at close and medium range. Therefore, he knew he had to do whatever it took to reduce the chances of the great iron by catching him. Oh God, the body shots will do some damage. Bring those with it. Right hand by Tyson landed, flux on the jaw. If you're a fighter who hasn't trained your endurance, adrenaline spikes can cause harmful energy crashes. 
Precisely, the aforementioned scenario was what Bruno started to experience during the third round. With Tyson's hard punches landing on his body more frequently, he couldn't afford to lower the level of his offense. But in the other corner, Mike's strategy was being benefited by the exhaustion of a giant who didn't seem to last much longer. He's very unorthodox, but it's blood. The commentators accused Tyson of not having the same fluidity as during his previous fights, but he knew that you can't beat all opponents with the same fighting style. Drop by drop, Iron Mike's punches were breaking the rock that Bruno represented on his way to a new victory. By the fourth round, Bruno started kicking to avoid drowning in the immense sea that Mike's war spirit represented against his, which had already started to be expelled from his trembling body. Tyson received fewer and weaker punches during the clinches that Bruno provoked. This gave him signals that his opponent didn't maintain the energy with which he started the fight. In his mind, it was the perfect time to bring heavy artillery onto the battlefield. In his career, Tyson had a tendency to be lazy in clinches, as to just going in with his head. And From the first second of the fifth episode, Bruno went for Tyson's body only to be pushed, put against the ropes, and the target of a couple of blows. The message Mike sent was clear, I've come here to fight. His fighting style was now warlike, and he wasn't going to encapsulate it just because his opponent wasn't up to par. With more than half of the rounds to come and entering survival mode creates the risk of losing the fight, but Bruno seemed to ignore this fact. While he had managed to frustrate the first rounds for Tyson, now it seemed that he just wanted to prove to himself how much pressure he could withstand before breaking. Taking his time, Mike demonstrated his greatness by executing a combination of blows that created the perfect scenario for the least expected outcome of the night. Putting aside his intention to weaken Bruno with body shots, Tyson went straight to the head to make the giant muscle mountain tremble. Dancing around the ring, Bruno was left against the ropes at the mercy of Tyson's mercy. And an uppercut with the right, and Bruno is wobbled again. A left hook. Uppercut, uppercut, right hand, Bruno's in serious trouble. And Richard Steele watching carefully. His enormous body was subjected to absorbing the blows of a champion who did justice to his titles. There were only 10 seconds left to survive, but Steele realized that Bruno was unable to defend himself. Oh, he's, it's just a matter of time here. Vicious, that's, that's that, 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 that photo shot, and beautiful Richard shot. Steele has seen it up. As Terry Long Tyson had knocked out his inner warrior, and all that was left of the huge fighter was an empty shell standing by inertia. Thus, five seconds before closing the episode, the Great Iron Mike successfully defended his titles once again by technical knockout. The rivalry between Bruno and Tyson continued for years. Once again, the whims of fate forced them to step into the honorable boxing ring to measure forces in 96. With more experience and maturity, Bruno struggled to be the one to emerge victorious from the ring. What happened? That story belongs to another chapter. If you've made it this far, I thank you. If you've enjoyed this journey into the past, I remind you that there's no better way to support my content than by leaving your like on the video. Now that we, V confirmed that Tyson's strategy of targeting the bodies of his taller and bulkier opponents was a success over the years, do you really think a couple of extra centimeters make a difference? I'll read you in the comments.